Mm. I'm here to be pretty. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't cut quarters oh, the bell. at Senka The bell thin. right inside to stop. We don't, we don't cut quarters at Senka Thin. We only cut sheet metal. Hey guys, welcome to Cutting Corners with Jim and Jake. Today we're talking about DFM for bending. Yeah, so design for manufacturing, right? Yes. It's the first thing that we do when your parts come in our doors. We make sure that we can't actually make your parts. And so oftentimes we see a lot of issues with bending and because bending is a complex operation that we're gonna be yes. asking the operators to do or you guys to design for. We thought no better video than to kind of go over the common things that we see in bending and that our design for manufacturing team has to reach out to customers yes. to do little corrections, right? And you know, we're a software company first, a manufacturing company second. So we yes. do work on making sure that we're doing DFM live in the app as you upload your, your parts. Um, but because bending is so complex and has so many different variables, yeah. we still have to have humans in the loop to look for weird stuff that we've never even imagined totally. on the software side. I'm proud of you for camera too. Thanks. You can get yourself a tally. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so I think we broke this down into a couple main categories and stuff. And this is, yeah. this is probably going to be a multi-episode video because there is so much stuff to talk about here. But yeah, let's start with collisions, okay. right? Yeah. So we what have, is, What is a collision, first of all? So a collision can be two different things, right? So we can have a collision in which the part and stuff hits itself, or we can have a collision in which the part hits the machine before we can fulfill the bend. Correct. So we have a couple of examples here. So um, we're gonna have some B-roll coming over this. Be all fancy, we're gonna make Keaton do some work. But we have two parts here. When the flange lengths get increasingly long and it's a narrow channel, when this part gets bent up into the machine, this is going to hit the machine right here, right? Boom. Kind of. It's gonna like hit that. the dot, yeah, the punch that's coming in, right? Yep. So B-roll should have been over us on that. When this part <laughs> has flange lengths, we have enough clearance, right? We're gonna end up having yes. a gap here and it's all gonna work. We also have flat versions of these parts. When you kind of put these in here, right? They look, they look fine, right? You can't tell the difference between these two parts, right? So it's important to understand like when that part becomes 3D, yep. that's kind of why I kept the flat parts in here, but that's when we're gonna see that issue. Also, we have collisions. Yes, corner clearance. Corner clearance. Um, so corner clearance, we have two more parts here. So with these parts right here, what we end up having is that it looks fine from a channel perspective, but I'm gonna grab this punch again. When I put this punch in here and get in there nice and tight, I yeah. don't have enough clearance with the side of this part with that punch. And we have that's, to use a smaller punch. Yeah. And what we can do, and again, our DFM team does a great job of this, is we can give you some Yep, examples. Yeah, you, I was saying, I'm there. helping, I'm helping. No, you're good, I'm so, you, you wanna hold that one and I'll yeah. hold this one? Yeah. So let's flip the part over. Oh. On the back of this, we did a little bit of a relief right here. Yeah. And that allows us to have a narrower punch, which avoids the collision in the corners. Yes, so we can get in there. We're not gonna distort these flanges that we've yep. already done. And from an outside point of view, we have the same exact flanges, same exact box, but a successful bend versus an yeah. unsuccessful bend. Well, and here's, Here's the difference yeah. too. Boom. Slots. You can see those those slots. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, taper box. So that so was that. Oh, and then, do you want to talk about relief or corner clearance? Corner clearance. Um, so corner clearance can be a handful of things. But actually, we don't have an example of that. This is kind of a corner clearance thing. If I brought this flange in on these, what I end up doing is not allowing this flange to get bent up because the two flanges connect with each other. That one's a little bit kind of more straightforward. Okay, so let's summarize, let's summarize. Yep. If your flange lengths are too long, it can collide with tooling or with the machine. Yep. If you do something that's tapered, uh, you can run into issues where our tooling will collide. So we have to use a shorter punch so that these are these relief cuts. Yep. And then do we talk about bend relief at all? Or well, is that so, a different yeah, video? Bend relief is gonna be in distortion. Okay. Right. I'm jumping so yeah, ahead. no, you're good. So collisions, a couple different collisions, right? Part to part, so your own part colliding with itself, and then part to machine, yeah. right? Um, 
The good thing is, is a lot of our guidelines kind of protect you for, from those. Yes. So if you go into the material details on the website, you'll end up seeing different channel depths, heights, widths. Um, a lot of those are designed by our R&D team with collaboration from our bending team to know what we can and can't do before you even design your parts. Yeah. Distortion. All right, let's go into distortion. Yeah. Um, this one I'm familiar with. Yeah. Tap holes or hole geometry. Yeah. So uh, we'll usually do some of our whole operations before bending. It just depends on the geometry. It depends on, on what we're doing. And what whole operation we're doing. Correct. So if I need this part bent and my hole geometry is too close to the bend area, it'll distort. So even though we've tapped that hole, uh, I'm not going to be able to get a screw in there. There's, there's no way. I mean, not going to work. The, the threads are now. And so we actually did yes. this in three different stages right here, right? So we have one hole that is well within our die line, so the, where the contact of that brake tooling is going to be. And then we have two more holes here that are just on the edge of the die line, so they're questionable on whether or not going to be distorted and stuff. Yep. One right here. Actually, you this is actually mark. great right here. That we can get in here. It's real tight here. This witness mark right here, you can see this one's on the witness mark. This one's just outside of it. This one has potential distortion. This one will have no distortion. This one's well and clear. Yep. And so as we kind of go through that, if you get reached out to by our support team, our DFM team, saying that a hole is too close potentially to that bend line, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about that we're gonna hole warn stretching. You. Yeah, we're also going to warn you mm -hmm. in the app when you go to perform these different operations, there will be a warning area. You'll yes. see it in yellow. We'll even pop up a little thing that says like, hey, are you sure you're going to have distorted geometry because we've detected it? So just know that before you get into the designing. Yeah, and so there's a handful of things. We got dimple dies. Um, we do have hardware installation, tapping, countersinking, um, or actually just generally speaking, a hole kind of being in that area, that's when you're going to end up getting that warning. If you accept it, just know that that's what you're accepting. Talk to us about uneven flange. So uneven flange is a fun one, right? Because this is actually a part that we can totally make, but what ends up happening is that this flange being uneven, when we have that die come across, part of it is unsupported when we bend it. And what happens is, is that this part will try to twist with uneven stress across the bend, and you'll end up seeing that this flange right here has a chance of being slightly out of whack from what you originally yeah. wanted to, right? There's not a lot we can do about that. One good solution is to go ahead and web in something that you can break off or grind away later that has additional support, gives you an even flange support when you're bending it, and then you go ahead and cut that off and get back to your original design. Yeah, we That's ask kind you of to what do I the same thing uh, with a non-parallel bend. We yes. ask for a parallel on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this one actually has a parallel line that we can register up against, right? Yes. But then it has uneven pressure. That's the most important thing. So corner release, corner release, corner release is probably one of the biggest ones, yes. right? Um, we have two parts here. Yeah. You can see that this one's starting to tear and yep. get messed up. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have a part here that has square corners and this is, this is actually a great part to have here with a flat, these square corners right here don't allow us to have any give in those corners. And so what you'll end up seeing is real tight in here you'll end up seeing like a little bit of cracking and tearing in the corners, as well as in this corner right here, you can see it really kind of pulls that corner across. It's just a weak spot in your design. It's going to crack. Yep. There's actually cracking on the inside of this one if you look really close. So here's the, yep. Here's what we started with and here's the revision. So a nice big relief in there, as well as uh, these release reliefs for this flange. Yeah, and that relief is most, mostly up to almost the die lines here. And that's because that's you have to relieve everywhere in which it's going to be deforming over time. As well as these relief cuts right here allow that bend to happen independently of the flat part that you want your part. I was trying to match it. Yep, you go, you go for it. Just uh, match it to that yes. camera. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. So producer Sarah is. Okay. Look at the. I'm doing too much. Well, you when you I'm make something competitive a thing there. I'm all in. A corner reliefs. Okay, so let's talk about. We're actually doing great. Uh, let's talk about just stuff that is not possible. Sure. Short flanges. This is a fun one. I have a part right here that was supposed to be bent. 
<laughs> it's not bent. It's not bent. Couldn't bend it. Um, we have a great B-roll of this. Essentially, the flange is not long enough to spread across the die, and so it falls in there and you can't bend it, yep. right? Um, well, I want to talk real quick about what a die is and what a punch yeah, is. Yeah, that's actually a really so, good point, yeah. Looking in profile to, uh, on the machine, we have a, a punch. This is the part that comes down uh, onto the machine. And then we have a die that kind of looks like that. And yep. then your part goes across this. So if your part can't span that, when this starts to hit it, it just does, it doesn't it, do anything. It'll just fold into, <laughs> yeah, it just folds into it. Right? So this is a punch. This is a die when you hear us talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, short flange not going to work. Short flange just doesn't work. Non parallel. Right? So we kind of talked about that. Again, guidelines on our website for materials. We tell you which die and punch configuration that we're going to have. We tell you all the bend radiuses. We also tell you how short that flange can be. Yeah. So. I think that I think we did good. Yeah. Non parallels. Oh, sorry. We, we can just kind of talk one more time. If this also was tapered on the other side, I don't have anything to hold my part in there to make sure that my punch is lined up the way that I need it to. Yeah, our operators, when they go to put it into the machine, the machine gives us back gauges so that we can align the part. If there's nothing parallel to the bend, then we don't really know how to align it perfectly. So that's why we're asking for those parallels. Yeah. yeah. I would say on this one, comments. Because I'm talking about break-off tabs. Oh, you wanted to do break-off tabs? No, I wasn't. No, OK. Skip that part. Oh, actually, I'm going to look at that camera. Ha! I would no. say a really good thing, though, is in the comments section is a great place that if you have questions regarding deformation or bending, yep. you know, we can do more videos, episode two, three. We can address some things that we're missing. We can get a little bit more complex with geometry hitting and stuff. Yeah. This is the 101 class. Yep. We'll go into the 201, the 301 yep. uh, as needed. So anyway. Super fun topic. I think that's going to do it for us for today <laughs> with cutting quarters or whatever this is called. I'm Jim. This is Jake. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, hit us up in the comments below. Smash that like button. Smash, subscribe, whatever. And then uh, if you want to get pricing on your parts, upload your DXF or step file to sendcutsend.com. Thanks. Yep. Love, Love you. Bye. You. Bye.